This video is about the capital of Tataristan called Kazan. And somebody on Reddit posted something about this and I immediately went and looked it up and uh, on Google Earth and started exploring it and just began thinking about it and kept digging into whatever was uh, around on it and I came across a bunch of pictures and one of them is this landscape image of the city and this basically is a guarantee that those little thingies on the top of every building had a true purpose, they had an amazing purpose, they were definitely generating power or promoting some type of magnetic radiation, Van de Graaff static electricity, something was coming from those. You do not build that many of these without there being a purpose. There's just no way. And uh, this is the actual letter that started the whole thing. This lady talks about it. She must live around there. And it just sounded really interesting. And nobody really knows the true origins, but around the 1100s it kind of started. So I believe they celebrated their 1000th anniversary. And this pyramid that you just saw is a dedicated site, a heritage site, for the memorial of the fallen soldiers during the capture of Kazan in 1552. It's also called the Church of the Image of Edessa, which is similar to the uh, Shroud of Turin. I believe they had Jesus' imprint on another uh, cloth, and that's what this is called. So this is dedicated to that. There's ancient symbols. This thing was around at least in the 1550s. Who knows if it was before then, that's again when Ivan the Terrible came around and started destroying stuff. It's also the same time as Henry VIII, so something amazing or crazy or terrible happened during that time in the world and that was probably one of the first resets, I think. So at that point they basically were claiming a lot of these buildings that could have been made at any point in time. This does not have to be the memorial for, for, for fallen soldiers. It could be something totally different. It could go underground, and it basically saved itself by being surrounded by water from being involved in any of the massive fires that occurred from basically 1500s onward that devastated the city repeatedly, which I'll talk about in a second, which is pretty intense. And this pyramid didn't even have its own Wikipedia page. It was just lumped into pyramids. And this image shows the pyramid on top of a hill, so I'm not sure if it was eventually moved down to that water spot to protect it or what or if it was built there originally and that was just a different design but it was clearly honored in a lot of this old artwork it was a very cool interesting place whatever it was it might have held something amazingly secretive something very powerful something they wanted to make sure never got burnt but this city and all this information leads to this city being something really spectacular and there's a lot of cool videos out there that show it nowadays and people touring on it for like a hundred bucks but I just wanted to explore it from a different angle. And they love pyramids because this is another, this is a shopping center, I believe. And uh, they have a lot of cool towers. This tower, the Soyamika Tower, is really also pretty amazing because it sheds a lot of light on the mystery of the architecture in this place. And now it's in this thing called the Kremlin, which is this giant area, this palace, this fortress. And it's one of the few remaining structures, and it's kind of slanted. So there's a story that um, one of the cons of one of the leaders, like his wife committed suicide or something. Oh no, she, he loved this girl, so they built it in like a week for him, and it's part of this step pattern. And then his wife or something committed suicide on it, but that's also been kind of disproven. It's just like a fairy tale. It's one of those stories that seems to be attached to something in order to put a time to it and in order to kind of distract from the fact that its origins are a complete mystery. And this building was also amazing, incredibly elaborate. I don't know what this is, but this is proof that these buildings were all over the place in this thing. And this history of this city has had so many fires that it's amazing that even some of these have survived. And then when you look at the fires and the intentions behind the fires, it's really nuts as well. The city was just constantly being destroyed by some force that was not natural. It was definitely incendiary. And, uh, you know, these buildings could have been all over the place. Every one of them has an amazing dome. They, they all talk about how different symbols, there have been different mosque symbols, the crescent moon's been on top of these things at times. The Muslim, Islam, Christianity, a lot of different religions were here throughout different times. But who was the origins? Who were the origins of these buildings? Who were the original people that made those buildings that you see in that landscape at the very beginning? I don't know. So they have a lot on Wikipedia, which always tells blah, 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 and uh, you can check it out. But, I mean, a lot of the things really happened from the 1500s to the 18th, I mean, to now, which is what we know about. Everything before then is lost in destruction and whatever, but the city is a thousand years old, so there's a lot. Here's a little population chart, 5,000 
to 12 to 1.2 million. So that means that when the city looked like this, there was only 5,000 people in it. So that doesn't really make sense. And this is the Palace of Architecture. Look at the dome on the top. This thing is amazing. This thing looks Roman. It looks absolutely ancient. A lot of these are. And a lot of these probably couldn't be destroyed by fire. And that's what is also very curious, is these buildings, these marble, these stone buildings, how does a fire destroy these? Like, we make fireplaces out of things like this so that they don't burn. Like, in order to burn these things down to the ground, you really have to destroy them. And um, these things on the top, there's gold, there's a lot of gold to just put as a top. Again, gold is a conductor, they paint it whatever, it's still a conductor. All these things, all these amazing buildings in this place called Kazan, which I had never even heard about, but it's near St. Petersburg, so it was kind of like a secondary St. Petersburg in the past. May have even been bigger than we could ever even imagine. It could have been these buildings all over the place. Even in the local towns, there's tons of different things. There's all kinds of signs of um, water movement, people building landfills, people doing all kinds of different things. And um, so there's no, turn, no telling. It's really a mysterious, awesome place that doesn't seem to get as much credit. There's a lot of really cool mosques. This one is very popular. This is one of the most popular ones. And these buildings, again, look like Roman. So it's a mix of Islam, Roman, Tartarian, which is, you know, this place is Tataristan. Is this showing hints of what the Tatars were like? And there's a lot of different records of them being like vagabonds and vibrant and mean and really violent people. But then there's other ones of them being incredibly industrious, creative, well-learned, well-spoken, well-written, well-building, master architects. This reminds me of a lot of those little arches that you see in different Roman places. But you never know. I mean, there's very, this, this type of uh, architecture that we see here can be seen all over the place in this area. A couple other places like Archangels that I visited and a few other random towns that we've explored in these videos are all very similar to this. But only what survives remains. And that's the big thing about all of these. It's like, it's almost becoming to a point like, will we ever discover the truth behind this? Because it's just been, all of these places have just been ravaged by fire, by intentional destruction, so many times that they've been through phases of, of basically cleansing the, uh, the area of signs and clues that could lead people to the realization of who was here first. It's basically as if, you know, at one point in time, people set out the task of just making sure it was impossible to discover the truth about our ancient past. And they did that by burying stuff, burning stuff, destroying things, rewriting history, and just lumping all these things. And there's always people like Ivan the Terrible, Henry VIII, blah, 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 the Great. Like, you know, that's just kind of seems like stories to tell children. And speaking of children, this is even a children's castle that they have in Kazan, dedicated to uh, just magic, imagination, all kinds of incredible positive things it seems like you know that's a cool place if I was a kid I would absolutely love to go there and the city has a lot of vibrance to it a lot of color a lot of different um, tech uh, like technologies from ancient times different things like this which is like a collection of different worldly religion look at all the tops of these and that's just kind of for fun the heraldry this refers to the uh, mythical symbol of the dragon that can be found all over the place and this thing is incredible this is absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what this is, when it started, what it was for, but it looks like it's from another planet. I absolutely am blown away by this thing. So the historical symbol of Kazan is the mythical dragon creature called Zelant, often mentioned in legends. For example, when numerous snakes and reptiles severely hampered the development of the city, the hunters went in search of the king of snakes and defeated him. According to another version, the residents of the city bought off the giant snake with gold, after which all the snakes left the city. Another legend says that the giant dragon-like serpent always guarded the Khan's treasures and that it still protects the hidden wealth before the capture of the city in the secret caves. Historically, it is true that snakes were once numerous in the Kazan region, but then their number has decreased dramatically. And this was the coat of arms in Kazan a long time ago in 1781. And basically that tells a couple different things. It tells that they used gold to the point where they'd even buy off snakes with it. So it was probably pretty apparent there was a lot of gold. And then also the capture of the city in the secret caves. 
So again, I think we found another place with an underground city, an underground treasure trove that all you have to do is block off a couple entrances and nobody finds it forever and it remains hidden and it remains filled with mysteries. And during each one of these times the city burned, people could have brought stuff down there. And there's a lot of wooden structures too, which is pretty interesting. That I think happened after a lot of the fires. People were just like, oh, we're gonna start building wood and they basically expect this. I don't, I don't really know the logic behind that but there's all kinds of different things if you look in Google Earth people took pictures of different things in the woods different remnants of old structures and there's a lot of interesting things around this place that just really can't be described and the, the architecture just again it's just symbolic of this Tartarian architecture that we see all over the place these churches fountains this thing is just maybe a remnant of, of something they just put it down there as like a little shelter place these great statues, sculptures, incredible artwork. You know, these people were amazing craftsmen. They still enjoy all this stuff today. And now the city is more of like a sports-oriented city, so I'm not sure if that's to hide what um, the amazingness of the past. Here are some Google Earth images of the places, and this was a region that is just entirely devastated. I'll show a little video of that later, but that is bizarre. But all these different kinds of things, you can see it. Yeah, here it is. You can see it through time, through the 80s to now. There's the Karofsky Rayon, which just kind of remained decimated. It looks like it was a walled city with a bunch of mansions or big buildings on it, completely leveled. So who knows, maybe that was actually what we saw in that black and white picture was what was over there, but definitely something big. And it's really interesting checking out the Google areas of this. Look at these, all just structures. It looks like a bunch of foundations just leveled. And there's pieces of them still in the ground, maybe even underground things, and then just filled in with dirt typical way of hiding reality hiding our truth and it's nuts you know these things are everywhere there was so many different times in history when the people in power were like nope I want people to remember me as the person who did all this and then they egotistically destroyed all the past and rewrote the history it's happened so many times it's almost it's almost just very frustrating as far as uh, trying to really find the truth, which could be lost forever. Here are just some under, underground sewage areas. I thought that was kind of interesting. You never know how old that is. This whole area is, again, where that, um, that Zeeland was. Interesting little area and zone. Mosques in the middle of the woods in different places, and these could have been cleared out at different points. And these are the uh, waterways I was telling you about. It looks like a lot of land-made kind of water paths and blockages. That's the Kremlin from above, and uh, or actually it might be a totally different place. But these things are all over the place. I don't know why I found this interesting. Just a random circle in the ground that kind of through time just inevitably changes. With Google Earth, I like looking at things through time to see you know what they've become and what they started out as during the early satellite photos. But very interesting place, and like I said, it's very sports oriented now, and this is their sports thing. It looks like a UFO or some kind of um, Indian flying device, flying saucer. And so here are some uh, texts that I'll include now, and I'll tell you a little about these. This book is from 1854, and it, this part tells about how there exist so few remnants of Tartar architecture that every little bit has to be treasured, like the Soyambex Tower. So they really don't know what that's from originally, whether it's to protect uh, someone's wife or whatnot, but they believe that it was maybe from that time. So he basically discusses that everybody is entitled to make up their own history because nobody knows, and that's pretty much what happens. And people put it in books and they believe it and they kind of forget that. A lot of people tend to forget that a lot of that we don't really know is not actual truth. And this is all about the burning of Kazan, which goes from the burnings happened in, I believe, like the 1500s, and then they went ever to like the 1850s was the last one. And this really had something kind of very interesting in it, which was telling about the uh, fires of the 1850s. 50, 1842, the burning of Kazan, and there was a lot of different fires that were happening in different parts of the city, and nobody could really piece it together. They, there was a big windstorm that came at one point, but fires were starting in very different points of the city, and then after the city was ravaged, this author was actually here, so he's got an amazing account of it, which is actually kind of a little suspicious as well. But this tells about all the different fires, there was like nine of them, leading up to the ones in the 1800s. And it also tells about how they found um, several people at one point, in between the fires, they found some people from Poland um, 
that were basically had notes on them that said like come join us and be incendiary and start these fires so they believed that these were all incendiary fires started by angering people in the in different parts of the regions set out on reinventing history and destroying the architecture of this beautiful place and ridding the tartars from history forever which is basically what they did definitely check it out interesting stuff from this book right here so again, there's so much in every single city and town that we don't know about its history, but it is a lot of fun to think about, and that's the only way we really can get to the bottom of it now. With all evidence gone, we must get to the bottom of it. In the pyramids, different things we have to see that kind of exist between cultures, and the pyramids are one of them. They are in everything. Aztec, Egyptian, Kazan, Tatarian, uh, they're all over the place, and they're, they are maybe the link towards unifying or showing that there was a unified culture in the world at some point something that was people that were flying boating all getting together at one point until around the 1500s or whenever when the destruction started coming in but it really seems like all these people knew each other all these different civilizations were in contact with one another they shared design secrets because that gets their stuff all the way from New Zealand to Rome America all over the place and that's the only explanation really is that there was a unified culture on earth and maybe it extended beyond the poles and there was even more that we don't even know about and even more evidence out there buried under snow or wherever that we can't see but it's out there and it really we have to just kind of imply what we think from what we what remains and there's not much but it's still a lot to think about so much to think about we could do these forever and theorize and we love it it's a lot of fun and hopefully it will lead to something great the pyramids every single thing these ancient symbols they all tell a story we got to keep piecing it together and we will figure it out all of us bless you all happy new year almost